Well, there is, implied by his piece, a live and lively debate going on inside the Tory parliamentary party, but it's not one that they're too keen to do on live television, but we can discuss that debate with the Tory MEP, Daniel Hannan. Mr Hannan, a lot of people are looking for compromises and a slightly softer Brexit. I just want to ask, would it be acceptable to you if, as part of this, we decided to leave the single market but stay in the customs union so there didn't have to be a border between the north and south of Ireland and car companies could trade their parts backwards and forwards across the border? I think that would be a very bizarre way of interpreting an open Brexit. Uh, open Brexit, by all means, means maximising our trade links with the rest of the EU, but it also means being able to trade with the rest of the world. Now, even the EFTA countries, Norway and Switzerland and so on, they do it the other way around. They have partial membership of the single market, or in the case of the, the EEA countries, complete membership of it, but they are out, even they are outside the customs union, and so they are able to sign free trade agreements with China, Japan and so on, the, the economies that are really growing. If we're looking to the long term, that's where we need to be. Right. Well, a lot of people have ruled out being in the single market, so the, kind of, the second best for some of those people is being in the customs union. Is that something you could swallow if that's what... I can see you don't think it's a good idea, you'd rather it wasn't, but could you even swallow that as an idea? <laughs> but, I mean, I, to be honest, I think some of those people are just sort of grabbing totemically right. at things. Look, the, 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 the referendum was fought by a lot of people who were fairly close to the middle. I've never really bought this idea that the whole country is divided down the middle. Look, Leavers and Remainers are patriots who want the best outcome. And I think we agree, whether we voted Leave or Remain, that we want now to have the closest friendship with our European allies, we want to have military alliance with them, we want to have commercial ties with them, we want to keep the bits of the current deal that are working, uh, and that may include some of the existing EU programmes. I don't think anyone's against that in principle. Okay. But we want to do it on the basis of getting the best possible right. deal for no, us. No, but everybody agrees and with this course, partly, that means... Getting the best possible deal, everybody agrees with that, and we'd all like all the benefits mm. and none of the costs. But look, I'm taking it that you wouldn't buy the, the, the customs union. Is there any flexibility in your mind about the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice, the ECJ? Because it may be helpful in the negotiation to say, look, the ECJ, this European Court, can govern our aviation agreements, or, for example, could govern the trade in nuclear materials. Is that something that you could tolerate or accept at all? But the, the EU doesn't do that with any other non-EU member state. As right. I say, so could you tolerate it if we could and persuade them? Countries. Could you, could you tolerate but, but why it if would that we, came Why up? would we go in wanting a worse deal than Switzerland and Norway and Serbia and every other European country? That would be a bizarre position. Um, uh, we want... Look, I mean, the, 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 the way you can... The way you can get around that issue and, and make it work uh, to the advantage of both sides is to do what the Swiss have done, which is to say, you'll have your court and we'll have ours, but where there is a, a plain interest in having the same policy or a harmonised outcome, we'll simply do that through a bilateral treaty. So we won't be inviting foreign jurisdiction, but the outcome will be the same. The, the Swiss have replicated, I would say, 85 to 90% of the contents of the single market, including right. the real biggie, which is the prohibition on discrimination against goods uh, or services on grounds of origin, but they do it through bilateral treaties and domestic legislation. Right. So you're uh, sort of veering towards the Swiss option, but by and large you're not sounding very compromising. Do you think Theresa May, with no parliamentary majority, should, for example, reach out to the other political parties, reach out to Labour and even the Liberal Democrats, and say, look, let's see if we can foster a Brexit that suits 85% of the voters of this country because we got 85% of the voters in the election. Do you think she should do that or do you think she should only do that if they agree to do it all on her terms? No, I, I do think we should be reaching out. I, I, I've, I've said ever since the vote, it was a 48-52 vote. That is not a mandate for right. severing all your links. That is a mandate for a phased, gradual repatriation of power. We'll end up with a deal that is almost by definition going to go too far for some people and not far enough for others. But we should aim to get a deal that all sides can at least live with. And I think that will mean keeping a lot of the current links that we have with the EU where those are working. But, you know, even what people have been calling the soft Brexit option, which is the, the, the EFTA type option, even that leaves us with our farms back, with our fisheries back, with our international trade, our citizenship, defence, foreign policy. Even, I think we can do better than that, but even that is, is clearly becoming sovereign uh, and having our Mr. own Hannan? jurisdiction. Nobody is seriously suggesting that we, could, uh, we should have okay. ECJ rulings still telling us what to do when we've left.